So every day, I have to wake up and I have to show the world that I'm a man. It's not enough that I am a man. I have to now prove my work. Justin Baldoni is known for playing handsome, muscular characters like Rafael Solano in Jane the Virgin. Why were you trying to get in the shower with me? He says his identity has long been tied to how he looked. A serious athlete in high school, he played soccer and ran track until a torn hamstring put an end to that. I got depressed, so I overcompensated, like we all do, and I went in the gym and I tried to get as buff and strong and big as I could. And from that point on, the way that I, I felt in clothes, the way that other boys and other men looked at me, the way that other girls looked at me, I was like, oh, okay. So in order to get respect, in order to have the girls be attracted to me, in order to feel like I'm enough, I need to be big. You can use my shirt. And that began a whole journey in my 20s where I was just the dude that always would take off his shirt, that always had the six pack, that was just always in shape. Justin says he struggled with his body image and he is not the only one. There's a disorder called muscle dysmorphia, sometimes known as bigorexia. It's a type of body dysmorphic disorder where someone perceives their body shape as a distressing flaw in their appearance that doesn't line up with how they might actually look. It affects mostly men and boys who think their body build is too small and puny, that they're not big and muscular enough, when in reality they look entirely normal or some of them are very muscular, but they don't see themselves that way. The more you focus in on it, the more you can find flaws? Yes, and the more distorted your perception gets. Perhaps it's a little bit like staring at a word on a page that you're reading. After a while, it starts looking a little distorted and odd, right? Uh -huh. Dr. Katherine Phillips, along with her fellow authors, coined the term muscle dysmorphia more than 20 years ago in their book, The Adonis Complex. Take us back to the early 90s. I mean, how was body dysmorphia, or more specifically muscle dysmorphia, considered in society? Was it even considered at all? No, no. Uh, scientists weren't aware of it. Doctors weren't aware of it. If you think of Cary Grant and, you know, the era of my father, your grandfather, <laughs> they weren't obsessed with being muscular. They were perfectly happy with a sort of ordinary body build. And then over the decades, especially I'd say from the 1990s onward, we see an increasing emphasis on a more muscular male body in advertising, in action figures, the toys that boys play with. It's a secret crisis Dr. Phillips estimates 2 to 3% of the general population suffer from, largely in silence. I remember one of the first patients I saw with muscle dysmorphia. I noticed that he had six layers of t-shirts. He was trying to look bigger. Noah Neiman, the co-founder of Rumble Boxing, has created a business helping people reach their fitness goals. Here he is on Nightline 10 years ago, demonstrating how to get the perfect V-cut. Make sure you're using your abs. I want you to lean it back. It's this little ligament right there. Okay, that's so, here. Yeah. But even as the literal model of fitness, he too was his own harshest critic. I'm on national TV talking about, you know, looking good and feeling good in your abs, and I was self-conscious. And I'm a professional, and I was at home being like, oh, I should have done I some more sit-ups. I felt that I didn't look good. I've gone as extreme as, you know, eating the Rice Krispie treat and being like, damn, that's 100 calories, I gotta get on the bike. Do you think that negative thinking would have killed you? Yes, I mean, I was over-exercising, I was underfeeding myself, and that just wreaked havoc on my sleep, on, you know, my ability to function as a human. Aspirations of the ideal male physique don't just impact Hollywood actors and fitness professionals. 26-year-old PhD student George Mycock from England says his journey with muscle dysmorphia started when he was just 13. He says he originally began playing rugby to be tough like his dad, but an injury soon took him off the pitch. I was emotional eating because I was just upset about not being able to play rugby anymore um, and losing this part of my identity, so I gained a significant amount of weight. That's when George began to hit the gym, arguably too often, but online forums told him otherwise. 
you know, the, the term freak is a term of endearment in the fitness community. If you want to become really muscular, you want to be you know, successful and push and pushing through this barrier, friends are going to not understand, your family's not going to understand, but it's your responsibility to ignore that and push through. After nearly 10 years of tough workouts and strict diets, he was still not satisfied with how he looked. I basically got to the point where I felt like I would never be what I wanted to be and I felt like it would be better if I wasn't here. And one of my friends noticed that I'd been away for a long time and I was literally on that day I was planning how I was going to do it. Eventually, George sought out professional help with a counselor and is now advocating for others to do the same through his work with the Body Dysmorphic Disorder Foundation. I think masculinity, from my, my angle, is having the strength to live without the fallacy. So recognizing who I am and allowing that to be myself and being confident in just being myself. And all three men say, while there is no question fitness is important, for them, it comes down to self-worth. And in some cases, pairing that with counseling. I don't want to train for a six pack. I want to train because it makes me feel like the strongest version of myself and like I'm progressing today. And that progression has got to be the foundation of happiness. Hey, Justin, all the way left. As for Justin, he took a break from acting and focused on helping others, preaching what he calls the why ladder detailed in his books, Man Enough and Boys Will Be Human. Why do you want to work out? Okay, why? And then why? Generally, that third why gets you to the core root of the reason. It doesn't matter what the reason is. So long as you are aware of the reason, then go in the gym. How about a toast? He regularly discusses the pressures of what it means to be a man on his Man Enough podcast. Raise your hand if you've ever had body image issues. And he encourages his son to understand there's more than just working out the body. I always tell him the heart is the strongest muscle in the body. Of course, scientifically, we know it's the tongue or the brain. But metaphorically, it really is. When you get to the top of the mountain or f maybe further up the mountain, the grass isn't greener. Your insecurities don't go away because what you're trying to fill is a void that no amount of muscle will ever fix. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.